Hi, welcome to A Sharp with Martin Celia and August. Hope everybody's having a good day. Thank you so much for coming. When did you first start playing guitar and how did you get involved in the industry through that? Okay, I started playing guitar back in the early 70s when I was at school. Yeah. My father was a, a technician who worked for AWA, which is an Australian electronics company. One of his apprentices was a guitar player in a band. And he came to our house one day and bought a just a little nylon string guitar, showed me two chords. I had a plan, I played those, and he left the guitar there. Mm. And I played those two chords for like six months, over and over and over. And then eventually I just went from there. Very cool. Mm. And that's how you got into the industry with that's that? That's how it's I just... started to play. And then once you do two chords, well, you need one more chord and you can join a band. <laughs> so uh, at school we had a band going. The time I was 13, we had a, b a band going at school. And it was, wow. yeah, it was quite reasonable when I look back on it. It wasn't too bad. And uh, we did our first show in front of the... It was Morley Senior High School in Western Australia. We did our first show at the end of year uh, uh, assembly. There's probably about yeah. 1,200 people or something. We played um, wow, six good. songs. So I can still remember what they are, which is quite scary. Do you want to play them right now? No, I can't remember <laughs> what I played yesterday, but I can remember that. <laughs> and we played six songs, and, and it all went from next thing you know, uh, we just kept doing it, and it evolved. Next thing you know, you're in a band. Yeah. And that's what you do. That's your job. Okay, so the being in the band in high school kind of rolled into getting into the industry. Yeah, you know, you go, you play, and you know, every year or something, one person would leave and do their, uh, you know, their academic careers. Yeah. Then you'd move on, and you know, eventually, who was left standing was, who was? That? Yeah, was it ended up being the professional people, and a couple, yeah, two, I've got two friends out of that band that are still professional musicians. Very, very cool. Yeah. Very fantastic. So, yeah, end up being like that. So we started off pretty strong, which is pretty good. I'm not saying the band was good. <laughs> but it was good people, I had good people to play with to learn off. Yeah. So it was really helped, yeah. Okay, so you kind of focused in on having guitar as your main kind of area that you were doing in the industry. Yes. So do you have a favourite kind of guitar amp that you use? I, what I'm doing. I do, yeah, I have a couple, couple of favourites for different things. I do the surf guitar yeah. uh, sound a lot. And I use a, a 1961 Stratocaster that I've had for years. And everyone says, you can't take that on the road. Well, what am I going to do? What else am I going to do with it? It's been around the world so many times or whatever, and around. It, it's fine. I've still got it. It still works. Yeah. That's a pretty amazing guitar. What amp do you put that through? Uh, normally Vox AC30. I've got a, several of those. And, <laughs> several. Yeah, <laughs> as you do. Well, after all the years, you know, you just, just sort of just, all this Collect. stuff. Just, yeah, you turn around. Next thing you know, you've got like, all these guitars. Where they come from? You know, just over a period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how big your collection is? Oh, I've got a rough idea. I wouldn't know. I mean, if you told me I had like 40 guitars, I'd probably believe you. you told me I had 80, I'd probably just about believe you too. I don't know. Wow. Somewhere in there. Yeah, very, very cool. Okay. So in the experience of being in the industry, having a giant collection of guitars, yes. um, what's your most memorable experience in With, being in music? In being in music, there's probably several. I mean, obviously the biggest concerts you play, the biggest audiences, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Always remember those because it's normally a big event and a big day is focused around the whole event. Yeah. Um, one of the things I do remember doing, I thought of the other day, was someone was asking me about, we, I played in Cairns the other night, went up there for, to play for 75 minutes. Cairns is a three, three and a half, three quarter hour plane ride each way from Sydney yeah. and back. And we're talking about that. And I said, well, it's, it's interesting. I went to Spain once to play for an hour. I played one, all the way to Spain to play for an hour set at a festival. That's probably the furthest I've gone to play. For an hour. For an hour, yeah. It took me so. like two days to get there and two days to get back. <laughs> um, it was called The Wild Weekend, and a band I was in, we headlined uh, first or second night, I can't remember, but it was, we went on at midnight, and it was just big, big wow. festival thing, and yeah, I think, oh yeah, so the, that's probably one of the weirdest things, but it's also <laughs> great, you know? Yeah, the memorability. Mm. Yeah, wow, that's kind of incredible. So from that to kind of now, do you have any plans for the future? In the I have a new album coming out, I decided to do a song, an album of Christmas songs or those awesome. sort of things. I mean, it's been in my mind for 10 years or so and I just haven't got around to it. But this year I thought, I'm gonna do it. And I've just got the first copies back now. We've got a record deal with it. So it's all coming out. It'll be released on uh, October 9th, 2015. Very nice. This year. And yeah, and it's got distribution. So hopefully um, it, it has some traction. Awesome. So that'll be dropping on October 9th. And yes. where can we get our hands on it? Is that gonna be the, online there's or? There's a website. It was, the album's called Electric Christmas. Awesome. And, uh, it's on MGM in Australia. It'd be on iTunes worldwide and all the usual digital places. Yeah. And also on my website. Wonderful. That is very, very cool. So 
did you have any funny experiences in the recording studio when recording that or any kind of albums that you've recorded? I was here on my own one night. The previous owner of the studio, Jeff, had gone home and uh, I thought, I'll just stay and work a little bit. Mm. So I was here on a Friday night and, uh, and I closed the front door. Because we're on the, the front, you don't know, there's a red door down the front, what used to be red, opens onto the, onto the main street here in Riverwood. And I was knocking on the door, so I go down there and there's this guy and there's a girl down there. They're looking like, you know, they've had a few drinks. And so I said, can I help you? They, I didn't want anybody to know I was here on my own in case we're getting yeah. robbed or something. So, yeah, where are the girls? Okay, I'm the girls. Uh, well, who are you looking for exactly? Where are the girls? We want to hear, we're here for a threesome. I said, <laughs> oh, right. You must mean the other red door up the road. That happened a few times. I had a few knocks on the door. <laughs> I had someone come up here. And the interesting thing is, when you're sitting here on a, say, a Friday morning, mm. and the doors open, had this guy walk up the stairs once, newspaper under his arm. They always have a newspaper, looking for the girls. So we had a few of those, but that's, that was back in the old days. Right. So that's some of the uh, stories here. And there's probably a few others too, but I can't think of them right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite um, an incredible experience to be having in a studio. Yeah, as I'd you know. Say. Well, the thing is, when you, it wasn't my studio, so you're yeah. responsible for everything. You feel like you're responsible for everything here. There's a lot yeah. of expensive equipment here. Yeah. Someone comes up a bit drunk, decides they're going to... Um, Oh, I wouldn't mind a, a nice microphone. I wouldn't mind a nice something. Yeah. Like, you know, what are you going to do? There's three or four people trying to get stuff. Oh, well, you're a wonderful so. person to have in somebody's studio. <laughs> <laughs> so in the sense of going from funny experiences, mm. what do you actually think of the industry today comparatively to what you've kind of seen it develop it's, as? I think it's just changed. It, you, instead of like in the old days, you're doing advertising, for example, of your gig, mm. you did the local paper, you did posters, um, you, that sort of stuff. Now you've got to do everything. There's, yeah. there's like 20 things to do instead of just five things. I think it's just more of the same, and you've still got to promote your gigs, or you've got to um, record deals that just not what they used to be. Except it's more exposed now. I'll give yeah. you an example. Talking to my friend yesterday, his daughter is in her early twenties. Some of her friends have signed, you know, Sony Music, yeah. for example. So they say, oh, "I've got a record deal with Sony Music." Six months later, "Oh, Sony Music don't want to do anything with, not do anything with me." But how can I get out of it? So they spend, you know, three years getting a record deal. Next three years, trying to get out of it. Yeah. But by having everyone else signed up, what happens there is they control the new talent. And it's been happening all the time. It's been happening, I heard about it in the 80s and 90s, except yeah. now because of social media, people can get their thoughts out and it's more. Sort of it's more exposed. It's, it's always happened. Yeah. So I think um, record companies are always finding ways to make new re revenue. Mm. But I think their golden age was in the 80s because CDs came out. When CDs came out, they already had a lot of, uh, all the expenses were there. Uh, to produce an album, a vinyl album, might say cost $20. To make a CD, probably cost them a dollar. Yeah. Plus, they already owned all the master tapes. So they would have made a lot of money very quickly in the 80s when CDs come out. Yeah. And of course, that wasn't going to last. Yeah. So I think their expenses went up, everything went up, and then the record company was crashing because their overheads were too high and their income went down. So it's back to where it should be. Okay. So, yeah, so it's, what I'm saying is that it's not as good as what people might think it was. And I think partly because when CDs came out, they, they, that money came through for the CDs to finance all that stuff yeah. that was going on. So you kind of feel that digital is kind of benefiting the artist more than it I is? Don't think it's, I don't think it's any different. I think it's just a different way of doing it. Yeah. You know, you've still got to have content. I don't think people have... Uh, also, the, my opinion on the, the industry at the moment, you go back to the 60s, you had great songwriters, great performers, great producers, great studios. Everyone had a job to do. Great musicians. Yeah. Now, you get the, uh, the one-man show, the, the band. They want to write all the songs, they want to produce it, they want to do it, and they just don't have... Most of them don't have the content. Yeah. And I think that's the difference with music now than... Not everyone's prince. Uh, that you know. I mean, we wish we were. Yeah, <laughs> you know, everyone has that genius, mm. and he can do it. But he works really hard, I'm sure. Mm. But going back to the '60s or '50s or any of those years, like Frank Sinatra, you could say he sang cover songs. He didn't write yeah. his own songs. But he certainly sold them. Mm. And I think the problem these days is you have people who are not great singers, want to be singers, but they can write great songs. Great people who are great singers can't write great songs. Not, you know, very yeah. rarely does it all come in one. Yeah. It's like, you know, okay, I'm a great uh, cricket player, but because you're a great cricket player, doesn't mean you say you can play chess very well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
I don't know, but that's kind of what I think. I think that's what's yes. happening now. And yeah. occasionally a good thing comes through. I just think the standard's a bit below where it should be because of one of, one of those reasons. Yeah, oversaturation mm. kind of thing. Okay, um, so you've been busy with Mentors Anything in the past year touring. Yes. From what I've heard. Um, how did that come about? Well, I've been doing Mentors for about 18 months now. Uh, before that, I was in a band called The Atlantics. Um, with The Atlantics, we just finished a tour. We did uh, a tour of Europe, and that was basically our last. Yeah. Two bands, a couple of guys older than me. We had a meeting back in Sydney here when we got back and decided that we weren't going to play live anymore. Okay. So, so basically, I, anyway, so I'm driving home for that meeting, thinking, oh, what do I do now? And I uh, got home and there's a message there, uh, mentors are looking for you. So I just, yeah, next thing I knew, they said, can you start in Australia Day next year? I went, sure. And Ooh. we've been 18 months now. Yeah, it's great. It's pretty cool. Mm. Must be feeling pretty good about yourself, bit of a pat on the back, considering that Mental as Anything is such a rock institution here in Australia. Yeah, well, I found out later that um, they've had more top 40 hits than any other band in Australia. Far out. Including overseas artists, any other act. They've had more top 40 entries than any, anyone else. Wow, incredible. It wasn't them that told me, it was someone else who told me who would have liked to have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you see much going forward after the album kind of drops? Do you have plans uh, my, after my that? Album, yeah, well, well, I figure I've got a Christmas album. I can push that one every year. Mm. So it's always new, you know, new every year. So, I mean, yeah, I'll record another original album next year for my own surf stuff. Yeah. Mentals may or may, may not have some more product coming out. I know we're going to be doing some recording in a few weeks. So yeah, cool. we'll see how that goes. One step at a time. We did a couple of songs, see how that sits and take it from there. Oh, very nice. Seems like you've got a bit of a busy year ahead of you. With yeah, and with the touring, we, you know, we tend to do, uh, you know, I'd say, what, 100, 200 plane flights a year, I don't even know. We're, every, we're always flying somewhere. Gosh, that is a lot of travel. My well, frequent flyer points look very good. Yeah, you'll be able to have a really nice holiday <laughs> yeah. at the end of it all. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the new album. It's really incredible, and we're looking forward to getting our hands on it and having a listen. Thank you, August. Something really incredible.